and welcome again to today's session. Today's session is to help students prepare for human anatomy lecture and lab using Mastering A&P and is being presented by Professor Ruth Heisler of University of Colorado Boulder. Ruth, I'll now hand it off to you. Okay, thank you, Aurora. Um, thanks to all of you for joining me this afternoon. I am very excited to be able to talk to you about how it is that we are using Mastering A&P in our human anatomy lecture and lab courses um, to help assess our students. So first of all, I want to talk a little bit about the evolution of my teaching, which is probably very similar to the evolution of, of the teaching of many of you out there watching today. So I started teaching in 1992 in grad school, and I had those horrible old acetates. In fact, I think I still have a bunch of them in the back of my office here somewhere, um, that I'd throw up in an overhead projector in front of my 400 students, those acetates have 40 to 50 things labeled on them. I might try and draw on the chalkboard or not, not a very good artist. And then I had my slide carousels for all my histology slides. And it just always felt like I was very disconnected from, from the students and you know what I was understanding and trying to explain and what they were able to um, get out of what I was talking about. Uh, when PowerPoints came along, I honestly was not someone who was really thrilled with PowerPoints initially. I felt that they basically had the same limitation. We had all these images labeled with, with uh, dozens of, of structures, and it just was cognitive overload for my students. So um, I compare that to what we've really tried to do in about the last 10 years or so here at CU. Um, is to deal with this cognitive overload. One of the things I've done is I've used all these great resources that Pearson provides for their textbooks, the fully editable slides with those images from the textbook, and I've deleted most of the text on there, and I highly animate them so that one structure, the label for one structure comes up at a time. And um, we've also created some very concise learning goals that I share with my students. We use several different interactive techniques in the classroom. And the big thing, and this is really what I'm going to talk to you more about today, is we've really tried to add quality assessments to really help our students learn the material and understand whether they have learned the material or not. We have been very fortunate in that we had the assistance of some science fellows that were paid by the Science Education Initiative to get us started down this road. Their funding ended quite a few years ago, and since then, I've really enjoyed um, taking the lead on that and trying to keep up a lot of these things in our courses here. So I know I find it helpful to understand the background of someone talking to me about new and different things. So I, I wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of how we teach our lecture and lab course here at CU so that you can compare apples to apples or apples to oranges, however it may be. The first thing I should point out is that we actually teach our lecture separate from our lab. So we have two different courses. We split our courses several years ago, um, primarily because we found that students, if they had to retake the course, really only needed to take either the lecture or the lab. So that, that's really the primary reason we did it. There was no pedagogical reason. Um, in our lecture, we have about 800 students a year that come through our course. And they're split up into groups of about 200 to 250 students. So we teach this year round, two sections each semester. Our lab courses, we don't have quite as many students come through the lab. Um, and we have about 16 students, no more than 16 actually, per lab section. One of the reasons is that we have two cadavers in each of our lab rooms, and we never want to exceed that one to eight ratio. Uh, we'd rather have it about one to five, but that just monetarily doesn't work. So we have 16 students. And I should also point out that we have graduate TAs uh, teaching all those sections. In our lecture, historically, we always assessed our students based on four midterm exams. Or I should say three midterms and a final. And in lab, we use the four standard practicals, uh, the labeled structures. They get about a minute per station, something probably very similar to what many of you do. And after years and years of students asking for something more than just these standard exams and practicals, we finally went to using weekly homeworks. And this is where mastering A&P has become most useful for us. So in the lecture, we actually have uh, a homework due every Monday evening at 11 p.m. Each homework is worth five points. 
And in the lab, we've added twice weekly quizzes that students actually have to take prior to attending each of our um, labs. So they meet twice a week. I am going to start by focusing on how we've used Mastering a and to create our homeworks in our lecture course. And then I'll follow up with how it is we do it a little bit differently for our lab. So our homeworks are primarily testing on material that they've, they've already learned in lecture. And our in lab, those quizzes are actually preparing them to come into lab prepared to teach some of the material. Okay, so why is it that we chose Mastering AMP for our lecture? Well, um, I really like that it was a way that we could give students frequent and accurate feedback on how well they were actually understanding the material. We have found that it has helped students with retention of the material. And I think one of the big things here is that it, it allows them to see where they're struggling weeks before the exam is uh, basically popped on them. So they can um, spend more time looking at the material that they're not completely understanding. And I do think that if the questions are done correctly, they, they really do encourage deeper thinking. So we have these weekly homeworks. They're due every Monday evening at 11 p.m. in my class. I also love the study tools that are available in Mastering. And um, I've created a bunch of practice quizzes. So I'm going to go out live to one of my Mastering a and courses and actually show you some things um, to, to help you understand really how easy it is to set up these assessments on your own. First thing I want to point out before I do that, and hopefully you can all see my little arrow here, is we actually have what's called modified mastering in our course, where our students, rather than logging into an external site, they go into our learning man management system. We use D2L here at CU. And they link, they can just click on this Pearson link here, and it takes them right out to Mastering AMP. So they don't have to have a second login. Okay, so it's really very easy for them. Now, um, this is what most of you will see. And if you, unless you use modified mastering, there's a site where you and your students can go and log in. And the first time you do that, it will ask you as the instructor to create a new course. And it's very easy to do. Um, you'll also notice some of these other options here. Once you've created a course, it's really easy to copy that course and reuse it in subsequent semesters, or even share it with some of your colleagues if um, they're teaching the same course. Okay, so very easy to copy it and make your own changes. So now what I want to do is go out live to my Mastering a &P course, and I'm going to show you uh, very quickly how you can create your own course, what a homework might look like for you and the student, how to create that homework or any type of assignment you might, might want to build, and the different resources that are available to both you as the instructor and to your students in the course. Okay. So give me a second here as I switch over. Okay, so here is um, a course of mine actually from fall 2014. And up here in the left-hand corner where it says My Courses, if I click on this, you can see how easy it is to actually go back and forth between different courses. I have several that I've set up here. And when you set up your course initially, it actually is going to link to whatever textbook you're using. And I found a little cheat. Um, you, since you can create as many courses as you want here, sometimes I want to use resources from another Pearson textbook. Uh, perhaps since I teach a straight anatomy course, sometimes I want something with a little bit more physiology. And I can create a course using one of those physiology textbooks and grab some of those resources for my lecture. So just a little tip uh, that you might not have thought about. So this is what the home page looks like. And you can see that it has a calendar. This is going to be blank because it's, it's a couple of years now past these due dates. And I can post announcements here. But what I want to draw your attention to is the Assignments tab right up here in the upper left. And that is when, where you will find and your students will find all those quizzes or homeworks or whatever it is you want to create right here in this Assignments tab. We have 15 weeks in our semester, so I have 15 homeworks listed here. Now, um, these homeworks, if you want to create them, up here in the right-hand corner, it says Create Assignment. 
you'll click on that create assignment and the first thing that'll come up and let me just kind of randomly choose here an assignment this is the first thing that'll come up for you and as you create the assignment, the first thing you'll do is create a name. So you can call it whatever you want. This is my homework number eight. And you can choose a category. What's great about these categories, you can, you can create any one you want to. But once you've created it and um, indicated how you want these, these homeworks or whatever category it is graded, every time you create something new that's called a homework or assigned as a homework, those um, settings that you've selected will uh, then be used for that new homework. These are the settings, and actually let me go back really quickly to show you what I just clicked here. Um, here under grading and presentation settings, I'm going to click on that so you can see this is where you'd be able to select how it is you want it graded, how it is you want your students to be able to work through it. So for my homeworks, students don't actually get their results until that final Monday 11 p.m. deadline. I have so many students that I, the, the cheating possibilities were something I just didn't want to deal with. So um, I do allow students to rework it for practice after that deadline. So I've selected that checkbox here. But they can only see their score after that assignment is due. But you can see that there are other options here. If you want them to be able to see that score as they're working through the assignment, you can certainly set it that way. And I don't give them credit for late submissions, but if you like to um, you know, reduce it by 10% for each hour it's late, there's options for that as well. Here are um, some more advanced settings. So if you want to um, Again, allow them to see some, get some feedback as they're doing the homework. There is a setting that allows for that. We don't allow that to happen, so they can only see that after it's due. And there is a many, I'll show you the test bank in a minute, but one of the great things about this test bank is there are many questions that have hints associated with them. So if you like your students to be able to work through a problem but get hints if they get stuck, um, you can allow them to see those hints as they're doing their homework, okay? My students can see those hints after they've submitted the homework. If they choose to go back and rework it, say, before an exam, then they will see all those hints that will help them um, in trying to figure out what the right answer might be. And then there's also some other settings here you might find useful. I actually hide the titles that are designated in the test bank and just have them numbered as item one, two, three, four, or five. So that's what that is there. Okay. So those are your your um, your settings, the different settings that you have to choose from. Once you've once you've identified your or named your assignment and dealt with all those settings, the next place you can go here, number two. This is really the fun part. This is where the test bank is. You get to select all the content. And what's great about Mastering a and is just the diversity of types of questions there are here. The first thing I want to point out is under this big source section here. Um, the book source, here's the book we use. We use Marib's Human Anatomy text. But Practice Anatomy Lab is something that also will be visible to you. And we use that for our lab, so I'll show that later. And then the Get Ready for a and resources are also here. So I'm going to keep it selected on our textbook here. And I have the respiratory system. I selected that chapter earlier. So respiratory system chapter. And over here, you can dwindle down those questions by section if you want to. So I have functional anatomy selected. And then if I just scroll down a little bit, you can see um, that the first portion here of questions. There's a total up here. You can see the 21 questions total. And these are filtered by multiple choice. I actually really like the labeling questions as well. There's also sorts of coaching activities. You really need to just go and browse through these different questions to really appreciate um, how great some of these are and how helpful they can be. Okay, so you can just apply whatever filters you choose and here now are the different questions I have available to me. Simply click on one of them, gives you a preview. This is going to be a labeling or drag and drop type activity. And um, let's say I want to assign that item down here. I just click assign item. 
If not, I can just scroll on to the next one. And it very quickly will go through the questions and allow me to decide if I want to assign it or not. And the next one should be an example of a multiple choice. Here's the multiple choice. And once you've gone through and indicated which ones you want to select, there'll be a little check marks here on the left-hand side. And then you can go to your next section. I should actually show you what you want to go to the very bottom here, actually, to save those items to continue on to this next section. And here's where you can reorder those questions. So you have options of moving those questions around if you want them in a different order. You can add a message that would appear to the students. Or you might decide that you selected too many questions and you just want to remove some of them. So those are all things you can do on this screen. Um, again, just by clicking on the name of it, you can go back and look at it again. And over here on the right, I just want to point out um, what's available to you over here. I have a maximum of five points possible for each homework. So here is where you would indicate those point values. So on this particular homework, they're all set at 0.5. I have others where I might you know, have one at 0.75, one at 0.1.25, um, different things you can do there. And then here, if you, want to, if you want them to go through it in a very specific order, you can require that they answer the previous question before they get access to the next one. So a lot of powerful tools here to help you out. I'm going to go back quickly to select content. I just want to show you one thing that I forgot to point out with these questions. As you're selecting them, this bar on the right-hand side, this actually will give you an idea of how challenging that question was to other people who have used this test bank for their students. And so um, you can have difficulty levels here from one to five. Most of these here are twos. And then um, usage statistics as well. So just more things that you can take a look at. OK, so we took a look at how to organize these. The next screen here is if you need to keep track of your learning outcomes. We don't actually do that, so I haven't done anything here. But you can actually enter a learning goal that you might have for your course and assign it to one of these questions. And that's just a really easy way to keep track of these outcomes if that's something that you need to do or something you like to do. And then the final thing here, cancel that, is to preview and assign. So here is a chance to preview that assignment. And when you do that, it shows you what the students will see. So they get a pop-up box, and if they click on the first item, they can complete this question and submit it, and then they can click Next up here on the right-hand side, and it goes to the next question. And they can go through all of them that way. Now, another thing that is visible to you but not your students is the standard view. So I'm going to show you how you can change that to the solution view. So let's say you want to make sure that the um, test bank is giving the right answer. You can actually um, see that, that answer view and just to make sure that you're happy with that correct answer. And there are ways to change these, to change these questions and edit them. I'm not going to get into those details, but that is a functionality that Mastering AMP um, has. So just something to keep in mind. Okay, so quickly I just want to go back and show you some of these other features. Um, up here in the right-hand corner, actually, before I do that, I want to show you a little bit lower here, down here where it says course materials. If you want to upload any files for students to look at, PowerPoints, PDFs, Word documents, I have pre-homeworks I, I put in a folder for them, some sample questions from my old exams, I have study guides. So I uploaded all those to these sections, okay, so they can find that. Okay, so let's take a look at instructor resources. So in that upper left, I click, or upper right, excuse me, I clicked on that. And again, these are going to be organized by chapter. So you can select any chapter, hit go, and it'll show you the different resources that are available to you as the instructor. And um, 
those PowerPoint presentations, there are some that have been pre-created, although I know most of us pre prefer to create our own, so they have all those images fully editable. You can take out text, add text, whatever you want to do to download. Um, art and photos, different instructor guides, test banks, all that stuff is here, easy for you to access. And that includes all the resources for the Practice Anatomy Lab. So the cadaver images from PAL, the cat images, um, various animations, which I'll talk about in a minute, all easy for you to get to. Okay, and then finally here, I want to show you what the students have access to. So I just clicked on, I'm going to go back to my other tab here, the study area for my a and right up here in the upper right-hand corner. That's where students will be able to find it. And when students go to their study area, there are a variety of things available to them, again, sorted by chapter. So I'm going to go, again, I'll just choose tissues. And you can see that there are a variety of things that they can use. Now, um, some of my favorite things here, let's see, the chapter games and activities. There are a variety of memory games. Does this one have a crossword puzzle? That's one of my favorites. No, this chapter doesn't have a crossword puzzle. But many of the chapters have crossword puzzles, which I think is great for the terminology. I'm always emphasizing terminology. And these crossword puzzles are, are a lot of fun, I think. Um, there are quizzes, forum, so a variety of things here. They can get to PAL through this site, so they can link out to Practice Anatomy Lab. There are A and P flicks, which are videos, animations of muscle OIAs. These are great, actually, for your muscle section and having helping students with their OIAs. Um, definitely worth checking out. Okay, so quickly, I want to have a chance to talk about the lab just a little bit, and I know I'm running out of time. So I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint here. And the next thing I want to talk about is how we use uh, Mastering a &P in our lab. Because I mentioned that our students are expected to take a quiz before they come to lab. And this quiz is preparing them to teach a section of that material for that day. So we expect them to be prepared to, act, to actually know some of that material walking into the lab. And we use Mastering AMP to give them those resources to learn that material. Okay, um, They have unlimited access to everything that PAL 3.0 has to offer. The other great thing is that we, when our students create a Mastering AMP account, if they have to purchase access or if it comes with um, their textbook, they don't have to pay twice. With that textbook, they can have access to as many courses that have been created using that textbook. So our students have one Mastering a and site for lecture, one Mastering a and site for lab, and they only have paid once. So it's a great, it's a great thing. Um, for any two-semester type course, that would be the same as well. Okay, lots of stuff there. So we have bi-weekly quizzes. And um, one of the things I've used the resources for is to create these screencasts. I try to keep them at about eight to 10 minutes. Some of them have gotten longer. But I've taken screenshots from PAL, images that have been provided, and created very concise screenshots, or very concise screencasts to help students prepare. Okay? Um, this is an example of what one of our lesson plans might look like. Our students are split into either group, they're either assigned group A or group B. And based on their assignment, they, have, they are responsible for instance, in this particular um, lesson, group A needs to know all the material from including muscles of the posterior th thorax through muscles of the posterior neck and back. So they have to show up in lab ready to, um, ready to show those to their peers. Okay, and again, I've created screencasts that I posted to D2L. Um, I don't have time to show one of these screencasts, and we couldn't listen to the audio anyway. So, uh, but just to give you an idea, I've, I've taken, I can kind of go through to different sections. I've even inserted those animations from PAL so that I make sure students watch them. I've embedded them into these videos. And in it, I can show different things, and I've added, I want to show some quickly, go to, sorry, here. There we go, side-by-side -side comparisons of cadavers and models. So all great things to help the students. 
Okay. So I'm going to go out again just for the last minute or two I have here. I want to go back actually to Mastering AMP and I'm going to switch courses. So up in the upper left here, I'm going to leave my lecture course and I'm going to go down to the lab course down here. And our lab coordinator has set up all sorts of quizzes for our students. And you can see that the quizzes are designated as either Group A or Group B. And um, we set these up exactly the same way as the homeworks. And so this is a student view of what one of those homeworks would look like. And students, again, can go through and answer these. You can see some of these are images and they're being asked, asked to actually type in the answer. So, that, so very similar to a lab practical type format. And I probably, let's see, some of them are going to be multiple choice. I'm trying to show an example of that. These are all fill in the blank. Well, maybe they're all going to be fill in the blank. But um, here we go. Here's a multiple choice. And some of them will be multiple choice. Now, our lab instructor has set these up a little differently in that he has, um, if I go to edit this assignment, just to show you these settings here, he set it up so that students can actually retake this multiple times. So they can take it up to four, they can have four attempts per question essentially to get it right. So we really want them to have a strong understanding before they come into lab. So that's why we've done it that way. Okay. So um, another way to use these resources in a slightly different manner. And I'm going to go to the assignments tab here quickly. One thing I didn't show you earlier that I do want to show you now is how easy it is if you copy this course to a subsequent semester um, to edit the due dates. And I say that, and then this is, oh, I actually don't have, he set this up, so I don't have access to that. Let me go back to my other course here and show you that when you copy this over to a new course, it takes me about 10 minutes to change all these due dates. I can very quickly go down through the due dates, just put in the correct day and time for that semester, and I'm done. And then usually, just because I'm a little paranoid, I always try to go through and, um, and look at, at these in the student view, view the assignment, just because I like to make sure that it, it all looks the way I want it to. Okay. So that was just a, a kind of a quick explanation of how we use it in the lab. And and I'll, I'll leave it at that, and I really appreciate you all joining me today. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them right now. Great. Thank you so much. So as a reminder to everyone, please go ahead and submit any questions you have in that question panel. And that's in that webinar dashboard there on the right-hand side. So we do have some time here for questions. Let's see. I have one here. Do students complain about having to do online homework? Actually, um, no. They re the, mostly I get very good feedback. And it was very interesting once we started implementing it. We had some students that had taken our course before we used online homework, and then they had to retake the course because they didn't do so well. And the feedback we got from them was especially valuable because they really appreciated that. So, I, you know, because of that, I feel very comfortable giving that online homework and we can give them much quicker feedback than I'd ever be able to do if I had to hand grade 200 of them each week. Great. So here's another one. In general, what has the student feedback been for mastering? Um, you know, the first week there's always a, a few students who have issues getting signed up, but I have to say the Pearson reps have been amazing. We've been so lucky to have their help. This semester I think I had three students out of 170 who had issues getting signed up. Otherwise, it's been very quick and easy for them. They, they have very few problems, maybe once or twice a semester. I might have a student who says they had trouble getting in, and usually it's the way their computer settings. 
it's never been a problem with mastering itself. Um, I have more trouble with D2L, to be quite honest. So I've, I've been very happy with mastering. Great. Let's see. We have another one here. I saw that you can choose Practice Anatomy Lab as the book in mastering. What kinds of questions show up when you select that? Okay, so the Practice Anatomy Lab questions, um, I know very well because I actually helped to write about a thousand of them. So it's a very extensive test bank. And it is all multiple choice, um, fill in the blank type questions. They vary. And they're going to be images of the highlighted structure and you'll identify it. Um, but you can also take your own image. If you have a different image from PAL, you can create your own question around those as well. So, uh, you know, the, the test bank questions are going to be very similar to what you would have saw, saw with the test, the bad English there, what you would see with the text, textbook um, questions as well. Great. Thank you. So let's see if we have any more questions that have come in. Here's another one. Do you prefer creating your own assignments? to using the preformed modules for assignments, pros and cons? Um, I'm, I, I'm assuming the question has to do with preformed modules that might be available in mastering, which I haven't looked at that carefully. I actually, we, we very carefully created some multiple choice questions specific to um, misconceptions that we know a lot of our students come into our course with. We've done pre-post tests and we know where there are trouble areas. So to be honest, I've created a lot of the questions I use in mastering are ones that I've actually created in mastering. And then I, one of the reasons I like the mastering as a way to, to assign these homeworks is because I can use those drag and drop assessments and more interactive things that I can't create on my own somewhere else. And so it's, I think it's a really nice balance of a more interactive question and then some more challenging questions that I've written as well. Great. Thank you so much. So it doesn't look like we have any more questions at this time that have come in. Do you have last words for us before I go ahead and close it out? Um, yes, I just invite any of you that have any questions about either how we run our course or if you're looking for some guidance on how you might use mastering, I'm more than happy to have to, to get in touch with you, talk with you about this. And just a reminder, my email is ruth.heisler at colorado.edu, and thank you for joining me today. Wonderful, and I'd like to extend a special thank you to Ruth for a great presentation today, and thanks to everyone for attending. As a reminder, we do have more Life Sciences webinars this week and four career development sessions on Friday. Our next Learning Makes Us webinar series devoted to the physical science starts on March 1st, so you're welcome to register for any of those upcoming webinars as well. And please take a moment to fill out our survey that will pop up after the webinar is over. We do appreciate any and all feedback that you provide us. And thank you so much again for joining us. Have a great day.